Because I tell you the truth. One of the hardest things to do with believers is tell them the truth. Because they already believe that they believe that what they believe is right. And since they already believe what they believe is right, you can't tell them what you know is right. Because they're already saying, oh no, I already know that. But the father says, in all actuality, you don't know anything. Can anybody in here tell me how skin can be in water and it's filled with holes? But we don't never fill up. <laughs> but we in this water. I, I have yet to understand that. I can't understand how a little mixture of sperm in an egg makes a body on the inside that's growing teeth and bone and hair and come out looking like me. And we think we know something? The only thing we can even come close to saying we know is that he gave us a word that began our understanding. And we fight about that. That's why we got 3,500 plus denominations in the world today. I said 3,500 and still growing. Because everybody think they're right, but they got a scripture for that that says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right. See, it seems right because it makes me feel good. But it don't seem right to you because it don't make you feel good. Like it makes me feel good. So what I'm saying is right and what you're saying is wrong. And everybody pointing fingers at each other. And the father said, if y'all keep biting on one another and devouring one another, pretty soon you will have nothing. We still together, right? Okay, we, see, we made a lot of noise for the praise. <laughs> but I, I'm going to tell you, when I'm preaching... Brother Michael, I, I expect people to get quiet because I'm going to step on some toes because see if conviction don't come, change won't come. And people love going to services where there are no convictions. But if you come here, you're going to find some. If, if, brother, if, if Pastor Mike would have been speaking today, he probably would have stepped on my toes in some area or another. And you know what I would have shouted? Hallelujah. 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 Because I know my father loved me. And sometimes he got to put something on me. Huh? The wicked is pulling at our children. I'm glad to see some young people in here today. Hallelujah. 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 To a man in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my son here was watching my brother's son back there on those drums, and that's what he does is play those drums, but he stood back today and he said, Ooh. <laughs> he got them drums down. I told my other son, I told him, I said, Stand close to that keyboard player. Watch him. Pick up on some skills. That's what we're supposed to do. If my, if my children are weak, you suppose your children are supposed to strengthen mine. That makes sense to you? You see, because the family got to help one another. Not put down on one another, but build each other up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got people right now that, that I've sent to the house of eternal. Whether they got there or not, I don't know. But what y'all got down here in New Orleans, I said over there on Martin Luther King Boulevard, you're going to find a little place called the house of eternal. Go over there. That's our sister congregation. Hallelujah. If I didn't trust Pastor Mike, trust me. 
I wouldn't send nobody to him. I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't do that. Because I, I wouldn't be helping you. I'd be hurting you to send you to a place I don't want to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I'll get my check from you later. <laughs> you know, in reality, demons possess whomever allow them. We were, we were discussing Isaiah uh, when that was last night. Yeah, Rev Shabbat. We were discussing the book of Isaiah. I'm trying to teach the whole book. It's 66 chapters. Like it's got 66 books. And I want everybody to understand that everything you find in Isaiah, you can find throughout the scriptures. But those things must be improvised on so we can get a clear understanding. But when the demons possess people, they're not really going into a place that they're not wanted. The door is open. The invitation been sent. Because you're already born into a devilish evil world. Right? So when you open the door, of course they're coming in. The only way we are not put, wait, wait, hold on. Thank you, Father. Let me back up. The father said, I told you 35, you're going 45, slow down. Yeah. When, when you look at the story, we were possessed a long time ago. Oh, I knew we were going to get no shouting out of that. But when you was out there in them streets, shaking it down to the ground, yeah. dropping it like it's hot, yeah. mini skirting down and, and tight pants and shit out and you want to show your little chest hair and all that. You know, and guzzling and smoking and doing your thing. A demon was in you. Right. Right. Using you. Okay. And you allowed him because you felt good. Yes. And you thought that was you. And didn't know that demon was using you. And when somebody came to point out the fact that the demon was using you, you cussed them out. Well, I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> yeah, you cussed them out. I did. I ain't gonna lie, I tried. I did. I, tried. I had some choice words. I was an ex sailor. Let me tell you something right there. <laughs> I, I, I invented some of them words. <laughs> but the point is, we had demons in us then. And all the only time they started evacuating this house is when he started dealing with me with his word. Somebody needs some evacuation going on today? See, the more words you get in you, the less space demons can reside. So if you can just get some more word in you, the demon's going to run out of you. Because light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place. Can't serve two masters. Can't do that. You're going to serve one, love one, and hate the other. We admonish the Father and we go before him and we tell him how much we love him. Question is, do we really love him? John 14, 15 says, if you love me, if you, show me that you do. Keep what I said you can keep. Live like I said you can live. And I'm going to bless you like I said I'm going to bless you. But if you refuse to obey me, I'm going to curse you like I said. I'm going to curse you. See, a lot of folks don't understand Deuteronomy 28 is for us. It's why we've been in these situations for so long. We picked up on the ways of man and neglected the ways of our Heavenly Father. But we still wanted to be blessed. 
Yeah, yeah. When I came into this ministry, I, brother, I wanted, I wanted that, the car that T.D. Jakes was driving. Yeah. I did. I, I wanted Creflo Dollar's Learjet. Mm, I wanted that building that Joel Osteen got for free. Yeah, I wanted them suits that Rod Parsley be wearing. And the father said, none of that's for you. Not one bit of it. He said, you're worrying about Christ. Let me, he said, let me, let me help to pull you away from that ideology. Let me make you understand where I am. Didn't I tell you upon this rock, I'm going to build my assembly? Yeah. And didn't I tell you that where two or three are gathered in my name, that's where I'm going to be? Yeah. Didn't I tell you freely I gave it to you, freely you receive it? Yeah. Didn't I tell you that? Yeah. I didn't make you a hireling. Yeah. I called you to be a shepherd. See, with, with, with this crowd, Brother Mike, I'm really holding back, trying to hold my Baptist side down. I'm about to get loose up here. <laughs> I'm really trying to, I got to get through these words the Father then gave me. I can't interject Isaac in now. You see, but, but, but we got to understand that we were full of demonology. But the chains that was on us, you know, because people chained us up when we was in our demon state. You can't go here. You don't want you there. And you ain't no good. And, and, and you're just evil from the core. And they wrap you up in all these chains. Oh, but when the spirit of Yah came. Come on. When the spirit of Yah came into the house, I'm going to tell you right now, it felt so good to feel those chains being pulled apart and coming off of me. Somebody in here say, shake it off. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Ken, I used to sit in the sanctuary and couldn't lift my hands like this. I couldn't yell, oh, hallelujah. I didn't do none of that. I just sat like this. Ooh, just sitting down like that. And then I saw a little short man, Don Simmons, never forget his name. He, every time the preacher said something, like, ooh, he was all over the pulpit. And I took my, I was sitting up in church, high as this Georgia Pines. <laughs> Y'all got to excuse me. I'm kind of transparent. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I went there with the wrong intentions in the first place. I did, you know. I knew two things was going on over there. First, they had food because it was doing Thanksgiving time. I needed my money to satisfy. The second thing was they had women in the choir. <laughs> my brother back there, he don't talk, he's not my lie. So I'm sitting in church with my shades on and I'm just scoping out the choir stand and waiting for the food. Until I saw that little man running up and down the pulpit screaming and hollering. Wah! And I said to myself, hmm, I got baptized at seven years old. And I'm ashamed to do that. I took my shades off, put them in my pocket. My high came down. So he kept, um, Brother Dewey, kept on preaching.